strong. Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to Small Church Ministries. My name is Luis and I want to welcome everybody back today and also those joining us for the very first time. Welcome. We have an amazing service ahead for you guys. And I want to start off this service by reading this verse in Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I'm sure all of us have heard the phrase, I love you with all of my heart used in some sort of shape or form and often gets thrown around and becomes some sort of cliche to many over the years. But what does it truly mean, the phrase, all of my heart? While literally the, the word heart is the, you know, the organ that pumps blood to the rest of the body, since ancient times our heart has been associated with our emotions, even though it isn't necessarily the source of our feelings. The Bible often uses the word heart to refer to the central place of one's being, where one's whole mind, soul, and spirit operate. So the heart was what guided the person to make sense of the world, and it was what guided one's emotions and where one's emotions flowed from. What does it mean then to trust in the Lord with all of your heart? This means that you can put your trust in God with absolutely everything you've got. Your emotions, your understanding, your strength, your intelligence, your whole personhood. In other words, trust in the Lord with your entire being question for you guys today who are we putting our trust in today are we putting our trust in ourselves is it in some sort of relationship that we have our career maybe it's our money i truly believe that god wants to do something powerful in all of our lives today and he's just waiting for us to put our full trust in him let's pray Father God, thank you so much for your word that says that we can put our trust in you. Thank you, Lord God, that you're a reliable God and a God that loves us. And Lord, that we, any, whatever concern we have, we can throw it all to you. Lord, I pray today that we don't put our trust in ourselves. We don't put our trust in another person, our money, our careers, Lord, but we put our trust in you because you know what's best for us. I lift up to you this service. Speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen.
chains are broken, Jesus, you're alive in me. For those of you who'd like to give today and help this ministry grow, or those of you already part of our family, small church ministries, who'd like to give your tithes and your offering today, simply scan the QR code that will appear on the screen right now, or go to our website, www.smallchurchministries.com. We truly believe that God's going to bless your generosity today. All right, Dad, I'm very excited to hear what you're going to say. I'll pass it off to my dad for our time on the meditation on the Word of God. Take it away, Dad. Hi, everyone. I'm back. Um, I just enjoyed the last two preaching about why pray and why meditate. And the real reason why we have to do those things is because everyone needs a breakthrough. And today I want to talk about breakthrough. I'm pretty sure a lot of you watching today need a breakthrough in different areas of our lives. I too need breakthroughs and we all do. Life happens and storm happens and challenges. Some of us need breakthroughs in different areas of our lives. So I want to talk about how we can break through the challenges in the walls or the barriers that are, we are facing in our lives. First of all, for breakthrough to happen, something has to break. Yeah, right? I mean, common sense. Breakthrough happens when you break through something. Breakthrough requires breaking through something, and that something may necessarily be something that is tough. Breakthrough is necessary to break through, because that something you're breaking through is hard. I mean, if it's an easy breakthrough, it's, you know, you don't need, we don't need, you know, it's not going to be a breakthrough. We just go through it. <laughs> it's so hard that you can't break through it on your own strength. That's why it's called a breakthrough. It's so hard that your natural strengths, your natural wisdom, your intelligence, even your experience is not going to be enough. They'll not be enough. It is so hard that it will require supernatural wisdom and strength and supernatural abilities to break through the hard thing that you're facing. It's so hard that you will need a miracle to break through it. In fact, you will need God. So breakthroughs will only happen through God's intervention. Okay, Why God's intervention? Why only through God? But because it will require some change, especially a change of heart. And everyone knows that only God can change hearts. It's not the heart of other people that needs change. No, no, it's actually your heart that needs change. I'm going to say that again. We're trying to change the surroundings. You want to change the world before you can change anything. You know, which oh, one thing you have to change first is our hearts. And no one else can do it. In fact, I can't change my heart. Unless there's a change of heart, you will never experience breakthrough. That is why breakthrough is impossible 
and it re will require a miracle. Most breakthroughs go against human wisdom. Look at you now. Where has your wisdom taken you? You're in a big mess because of your wisdom. Unless you see your situation for what it is, unless you have a revelation that it was your wisdom and knowledge and experience that got you to where you are. Actually, our hot mess, right? Many of the problems we have, it's because of our intelligence. It's because of the decisions that we make. You never, you know, you'll never experience breakthrough when, you know, because breakthrough is really very, very humbling. That's, that's what it is. Real breakthroughs are very humbling. You'll never experience your breakthrough without God's grace. And again, God's grace is only given to those people who humble themselves. So humility is the starting point of all breakthroughs. You're going to have to accept the fact that you blew it. Some people are still not yet at that point where they want to take responsibility of what has happened in their lives. You have to accept the fact that you made a mistake, that you messed up, whether in the area of relationships, in the area of finance, in the area of spiritual things. or it, You have to accept that you're there because of your doing. Okay, that's hard to take in, by the way, but that's how breakthrough happens. You have to accept the fact that, okay, you know, a lot of people make excuses. As long as you're still making an excuse, it's gonna, hard, it's gonna be very hard to break through. Humility is taking responsibilities of your mistakes, of your messes, of your boo-boos. But when you're finally down on your knees, okay, crying, and finally, you're desperate. You're desperate for change to happen. That's when breakthrough happens. I remember, you know, years ago, it happened to me. There was a barrier in front of me. But until I was really down, sometimes God breaks us so that, you know, we begin to humble ourselves. Because it is when you are broken. That's when God is able to work on your behalf. It's when you're broken that you're no longer interfering with God's sovereign will and power. How many of you know sometimes we're the one interfering with God to do something in our lives? Because it's when you are broken that you can step aside and let God do what He does best. He has to break you first before He can break the wall that is stopping you from moving forward. I'm going to repeat that. God has to break you first before he can break the thing that's stopping you from moving forward. Be sure of this. He wants you to break through more than you do. God wants to see you successful. God wants you to see you uh, prosperous. God wants to see you in a, in a good situation. He desires with deep longing, deep longing for you to break through your spiritual barriers, your relational barriers, even your physical barriers and financial barriers. He wants it more than you do. Unfortunately, it's before you do that, you have to give up something. Okay? So, some of you need a spiritual breakthrough. Some of you need a breakthrough in your situation because you are fearful. Okay? It, that's a spiritual thing. The spirit of fear. The spirit of doubts and and unbelief. Some are, some are so lonely and depressed and you're looking for life in the wrong places. You're trying to look for happiness and joy in the wrong places. Some are very worried. You know, you're living a lifestyle of worry and anxiety. And these are very spiritual things. And in order for you to break through, you have to give up some things. You have to give up your own pride. It takes a lot for God to work in us, but it takes, it starts with humility. To some of you, you're looking for a breakthrough in your relationships. These are areas that are so, so important because as you go through life, you will have relationships. And some of you need a breakthrough in this area, the area of your marriage. And I'm praying that your marriage is doing well. I'm praying that for those who are 
you know, married but are not happily married, that's our prayer, that you will have a breakthrough in your relationship with your spouse. And not to point the fingers, again, it starts with you. Okay, it starts with us. And I can tell you stories on and on, on and on about me and how my marriage got, has gotten better and how, you know, I had the breakthrough in my marriage. This was a long time ago. I've been married now for 33 years and our first few years it wasn't doing well until I, there was a breakthrough and it began with God changing me. Breakthrough in your relationships with your children, okay? And again, let me just say this. It boils down to you and your relationship with God first. Real breakthrough starts with the relationship with God before the relationship with people. You know, relationship with your co-workers, with your friends and relatives. Again, we're praying that you have a breakthrough in your relationship. Some of you need a breakthrough with regards to your physical health. Some of you, it's important, like you want a breakthrough with your health and I know that God wants to heal us. Okay, and I know some of you are suffering and I'm, I'm just going to pray that God will begin to heal you. But that many times it's because of our own doing. And many times it's just going before God. Maybe we need to fast and pray and so that this addiction or whatever you're going through, again, physical barriers, these are affected by so many factors. Like, for example, worry and stress can get you sick. Right? Um, not trusting God can get you sick. We have, um, there's no rest. Again, rest is important for our physical body. Why are you not rested? You ask God. Also, lifestyle choices. The reason why you, we are where we are is because of the lifestyle choices. Whether we sleep late or go out partying and, you know, abuse our bodies. It's very important. Another breakthrough that I believe many of us need is your uh, a financial breakthrough breakthrough through your finances some of you watching are in debt okay and again the god wants you to break free god wants to set you free in the area of finances some of you need a breakthrough with your finances some of you need financial planning okay in order to break through some of us need budgeting some of us need, um, there's false burden in helping other people, okay? Some of you will, will need new work opportunities. Again, God is the God who opens doors for us. To some of you, it might be a new season where you need to hear God and connect with God because He's going to tell you, okay, this is now a new season where I'm going to give you a new skill set, okay? Because times are changing. But how do we break, or prepare ourselves rather, for a breakthrough. I just have three easy steps. They're easy, but they're not that easy. <laughs> easy in a way that you can do it, but hard in a way that a lot of people just don't want to do it. The first step. Step number one, shut up and just stop. Stop. Just stop. Stop doing anything. What? For me to break through, I, I won't do anything. Yes. Stop, stop, shut the world, shut the world up. Shut your natural wisdom. It's your natural wisdom that got you into mess, this mess. Shut, shut down your natural willpower. Just shut it up. Don't do anything. Sometimes doing nothing is the best thing we could ever do. Slowing down. Stop, stop for a while and assess. Because when we do, Sometimes when we can't keep doing things, when we do, we get into deeper trouble. So stop and just shut up. In other words, the Bible says, be still. Don't move. Be still. And you know what you do? Know that I am God. Know Him. Many times in my life when I'm not pushy, many times in my life when I just stay still, that's when Number two, steps two, step number two happens to me, which is so important. The reason why step one is important is because you can't go to step two without doing step one, which is shut up and just stop what you're doing. In this life, you have to pause because everybody's in a rat race. Everybody's rushing, trying to get to the, their destination. 
and in their desire to get to where they want to get to, it destroys them. Sometimes you have to slow down. You have to assess. You've been doing that for many years. Look where it's gotten you, right? Okay. Some of you got some instant success and then now it's gone. And you try to do it again. No. Why did you fail in the first place? You got to slow down. Slow down. Be still. Which leads us to step number two, which is to listen. Listen. You stop, then you listen. You just shut the world up and then you listen. You hear God's instructions when you're slowing down and you're listening. See, the only way you can listen is when you stop. So spend more time listening. Spend more time connecting with God. Communicate with God. Go to God. Listen to God. Listen. You want to hear God. You stop and you listen. Again, folks, I'm telling you this. You got to listen. The word listen was used in the Bible 278 times, while the word hear, to hear, was used 550 times. In order to hear God, okay, in order to hear God, 99% of the time, He speaks through His Word. I'm going to repeat that. In order to hear God, see, the reason you can't hear God is because there's no audible voice saying, Hey, Jay, I want, no, no. You hear God through His Word. So if you don't read or meditate on His Word, it will be, be very difficult to hear Him speak. So you have to sp uh, spend time with God. Prayer is spending time listening to God. Not just talking, listening to God. David prayed to God. He prayed. Is this the right time to attack the Philistines? He listened. Will you give me the victory? He listened. He quieted himself. He didn't want to just do it. He listened. He didn't look at how big his army was. He listened. Okay? He listened first because he trusted God. And God answered him. He heard God. See, when you have a relationship with God, you hear God. God answered, attack. Wow, I'll give you the victory. So he heard God and God told him, this is the time to attack. And for sure, I'll give you the victory. See, God sometimes tells you things. You know, maybe he's in a situation where he was in a good position to win. But sometimes, you know, sometimes when you're at war, you're not in a good position to win, but still you believe that it's God who's telling you to attack. Does that make sense? So David and his troops went out to Baal Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. And you know what he said after he defeated the 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 Philistines, he said, God did it. David explained. He knew. He knew it wasn't him. He knew at this point when he had the victory, it was God. He said, he used me to burst through my enemies like a raging flood. God used me. Wow. He was acknowledging that the victory wasn't dependent on him. He was, only, he was merely used by God to burst the enemy. Okay, Prayer is communicating to God and communication is 20% talking and 80% listening. David listened to God's instruction. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. That's in Luke. You are blessed when you hear the word of God. Okay, a lot of people don't hear God. A lot of people don't stop. That's why they can't hear God. Another verse, it says, Therefore, everyone who hears those words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Some people hear God, but they don't put it into practice. They're not sure. You know why you don't put it into practice? Because you're not sure if it's God. But if you know you're God, you will listen and you will act. Okay? The last step. Look. Okay, to stop, listen, and look. It's not stop, look, and listen. Stop. You listen to what God's instructions, then look. Look at what? Watch God's work. Watch God. This time, watch God. Many times it was you doing your battle. This time, allow God to fight the battle for you. Let God fight the battle for you. Okay? 
Let God do it. Don't do it. Let God do it. Exodus 14.14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. And you only have to be silent. Okay, let God get out of God's way and let God do the battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. Okay, stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. There are times God will tell you, don't fight the battle. Okay, you don't need to fight. Just stand firm. Okay, stand firm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I want to win the victory for you. You shall not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. You may have walls, barriers in front of you. God saying to you right now, if you're listening, don't fear. Don't fear, because God will fight for you. In another verse, I like this. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Ah, they who wait. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sometimes waiting is the best thing to do. Instead of doing, doing something. Just wait. And while you are waiting, practice listening to God. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Another verse talking about crying out to God and hearing God. That's when He delivers you. So, to summarize, shut up, shut the world up, listen, hear God, practice your listening ear if you want a breakthrough, and watch the Lord work on your behalf. That's how you get a breakthrough. That's how you're going to win because God, when God works, He does the impossible. Amen? Let's just bow down our heads and pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. I know a lot of us, a lot of these people watching need a breakthrough. And God, prove to them, like you've done to countless people, Lord, how you have helped them break through. And breakthrough begins with us humbling ourselves, saying, God, I blew it. I'm broken. You have broken me. And Lord, I pray that, God, I need my breakthrough. But I won't be anxious. I'm going to believe you. I'm just going to stop, I'm going to listen to you, and I'm going to watch you do the work. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, at this point, one of the greatest breakthroughs in our lives is when Jesus Christ broke the barriers of eternal damnation or eternal separation from God, which is hell. He broke that. Okay, he broke the barriers of death because, he, you know, Jesus faced death, you know, face to face like this. And he said, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to be victorious against death. That's why we have communion every week. So you can bring out your bread and your juice. Your bread represents the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Okay, his particular body. He was the example of true breakthroughs in our lives. That no matter what the world brought to him, he stood firm. And then his blood, this juice represents his blood, which was shed on the cross. He had to die. And he had to prove to the whole world that once he died, he can break the claws of death. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead, proving that he's the son of man. The gates of Hades or hell cannot hold him because he was God. He was the true God. All the other gods, you know, Allah, Buddha, whoever God, that people are, they died and they're still dead. It's only Jesus who died and was born again. He lives. And that gives us hope that once we believe in Him, we too can be with Him in paradise one day. That's why we celebrate communion. You may now partake of the bread and the juice. Let me pray. Lord, I thank you for your body and your blood for giving us your life because you loved us. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's continue on in an act of worship as we listen to this music.
Thank you so much for that amazing message, Dad, about breakthrough. I hope all of us will be inspired today to know that only God can give us true breakthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much to everybody who joined us today, especially those who joined us for the first time. I'm really excited for what God's going to do for us this week. I'll see you guys all again real soon. Bye.